Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Serious Strategy Gamer and we are returning to Let's Play of Victoria 3. It is 1848 and there is some turmoil in the state of North Rhine. And there are a lot of uh, radicals actually in our state of the North German Federation, ex Prussia. So it being 1848 and there being turmoil, I think this is a good place to start talking about the historical context of the 1848 revolution and what that meant for German unification. Now, 1848 was, in all of Europe, really, a year of turmoil and civil unrest. And people throughout Europe were trying to get, basically, more civil rights, uh, curtail the power of the aristocracy and, and other ruling classes a little bit, um, and basically get more say in their civil affairs. Now, in Germany, that was also true, but it also took another twist. And in Germany, that had a distinct feeling of a pan-German and nationalistic uh, vibe to it. And the reasons for that are very complex um, and have obviously something to do with the fact that Germany isn't a nation in this time frame, um, or at least it's not a unified state, even though people start to see it as a nation. But one of the reasons is also that they felt that their civilian liberties might be a little bit better curtailed if they are living in one unified government rather than being living in Bavaria, Baden, Frankfurt and so on. We actually incorporated more states in this historical timeline uh, in this alternative timeline than they did historically, but that was one of the reasons. And in that context, um, most of them met in Frankfurt, in the city of Frankfurt, um, and they basically offered to the Prussian king the chance to become, I'm not sure whether the king of Germany or the Kaiser of Germany, but basically that was something that they offered. So that's the first big consequence, and there are three of them. Uh, but the first big one is the Prussian king gets offered the title of German whatever and would have basically very certainly led to unification of Germany and interestingly to unification that was originating from from a bottom-up movement. It was really the people coming in together and offering him the crown and that's, that's A, something that I think historically would have made life very interesting. So what would have happened if in an alternative timeline where Germany was a much more democratic country uh, throughout much of the 19th and even 20th century. Um, interesting thought experiment there, but it also meant that it didn't come to be because the German king didn't actually want the crown from the gutter. He wanted to be a king by his own right and not something that is um, coming from the people. So there's the one big consequence there. And that's of course something that we are going to see in the game here, uh, or at least not see in the game. We are not going to form the German uh, government via democratic means. The two other big factors that came into play were A, the Polish question, because in this time, a lot of Poles were living in Germany, specifically in Prussia. And it was a difficult question to whether to include them or whether to give them their own state. Um, and ultimately they decided, nope, we're going to be Germans predominantly and, and we gonna, we're going to keep Posen and, and all of these areas around. So they basically sidestepped that issue a little bit. Um, but it would have also been an interesting thought because initially at least the Poles and the Germans were a little bit aligned in their desire to formalize the relation to the state a little bit. We can maybe see that in, in this here down here, the enact cultural exclusion, uh, which does sound nasty. But it's much better than what we're currently having. So that would be a step in a more progressive direction. And it certainly fits the vibe. And the third big step, and that is one that's ultimately long term the most relevant, is that people in Schleswig and Holstein, which at this part were, I think, not formally part of Denmark, neither of these, but they were part or, or they were in a union with the Danish king. So very closely aligned to the Danish state. And these guys, that's true in the game, of course. Um, and these guys, therefore, because they have a very significant German uh, majority, these guys were feeling more of the vibe of coming together with the other Germans and therefore staging some sort of an uprising insurgency against the Danish rule. And it became a question of whether and to what extent to support that. And that's where we really come in. Now, what's very famous is the uh, war of the 1860s. But there was actually the first Schleswig war in, I believe, 1849, I want to say, 1848. Um, not entirely sure, I'll have to look that up. But 
There were basically two Danish wars. The first one is largely forgotten because it was historically an inconclusive affair. But I think that's where we're going to get in. And that is something that I think we can do. We have a truce with Austria. We can't do much about them after the horrible disaster with the Ottoman Empire and uh, Egypt, which left us humiliated. But we need to project that outwards. And we need to come and, I think, deal with the Danes. And without lengthy inclusion, what we're going to do is we're going to reform our military here slightly. Because I want to get first aid, get a little bit more recovery here. It's going to cost us. It's uh, specifically going to mean that we need opium, uh, which is a big issue because we do not have any opium right now. And I think that is going to show up here every any second with high prices. No? Well, we don't have opium for now. We do need to import it. So let's try to get import for opium. Um, oh, Jesus. No one really has that. That's a bit of an issue. Well, okay, we're going to ask the Brits for some. We will need to ask, I think, the Burma. Where did that drop from here? I think I, I saw some Burmese stuff. That might not be enough, is it? Let's check on that. Yeah, okay, we need 27. We've got buy autos of 10. 27 is doable. I think we can import from, from other uh, areas too. We might need to think about where to buy that. Yeah, Burma has a little bit more. Egypt and Qing have, but they're not really great at that. So I think we're going to look at Burma. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to get over to the... Diplomats? No, diplomatic lands are a thing. There we go. And declare an interest in the Burmese market. We can't. We have too many... You know what? We don't really care about Italy. We do care about Burma. We're going to ask them for their opium in a moment. And the second thing, of course, is last time around we did get colonialism. So let's start by getting some colonies. I think one down here in South Cameroon is going to be very lovely. And I think also one in Sulawesi is going to be nice. Good. So with that out of the way, uh, our troops are now training up towards uh, becoming a little bit better with the Danish guys. Disappearing interest, yes, uh, we know that. Um, the next thing I want to take a look at is, now, our monetary situation is not great. But I think we are going to get there. I think this is this is doable over time. Um, the opium shortage might be leading to some, some deficit here too. Um, again, that is going to fix itself um, once we do the imports. Come on, guys. Come on. Just get me Burma. Please, 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 and thank you. It always takes a moment to uh, for these things to come into effect. Um, and I kind of dislike that it's uh, taking so long. Okay, Russia. Okay, productivity was pretty horrible there for a second. And we're also going to ask these guys, okay. So that should uh, solve that then. Oh, these two states are isolated. I think uh, they will need some... Come on, there we go. Um, they will probably need a harbour. Yeah, so let's build up a port there. Um, at least get it, in, get it in the production creek. And let's get a port here. It's going to take a while for these things to become really relevant. Uh, but you know what? There we go. Good. Okay. So everyone is sort of laboring away. We are still running a deficit. Um, I think we'll need to think about our construction queue in, in the short term. I'm um, just making sure that we're going to get some good stuff here. And I think once we actually get into the wheat farms, uh, our budget is actually going to improve a little bit too. Um, so let's double check on the barracks. I think you should now have enough opium to basically deal with your s shortages there. Yes, it's still a bit pricey, but we can deal with that. Low market access in a couple of places. There's Thalia too. Um, so let's actually get another railway in Westphalia. It's always annoying that there's no bottom uh, where you could prioritize stuff and just sort of, sort of, sort of get it on the top of the creek. Twenty. Um, I think we are building a couple of more railways all around. So that's probably also something that we're going to need to expand. Yeah. So I'm talking about saving some money. Uh, but actually, we are not. We are really just continuing to build stuff. But honestly, I think just growth is always a little bit better. The arms industry is also going to work out fantastically. And you can see a lot of trains buzzing around in our western areas. It's kind of fun that we don't see any trains 
in Berlin for the moment, so it's kind of a bit curious. Um, but every other place, and especially I think over here, we are seeing now railways level six almost. So yeah, there we go. So it's coming in. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, yeah, these guys are going to be fine. We're going to get there. Yeah, we're going to get there over time. Um, stuff is expensive. Men of wars and opium. Tools are still expensive, but as you can see, we are building that up in Berlin. Um, so I'm pretty positive that that is not going to stay too expensive for a long time. Um, and I do think that once we are a little bit better looking in terms of monetary situation here, uh, we're going to be golden to start a play against Denmark. Uh, we're going to try to do that for sure. Come on, just tell me that we are a little bit better in money. I don't need to be in the green, but I need to be at least a little bit better. Northern Bonio is uh, depleting stuff there. Okay, we are now starting to build the wheat farms here. Still some tooling workshops. But it will mean that the prices are going to come down here. At least a little bit. That should help our budget. And the second thing that should help our budget is building wheat farms instead of tooling workshops. Yeah, we're probably going to need to wait at least until the building quay has cleared a little bit. And then we can start our play for real. It's not going to take that long, as you can see. Just a couple of weeks for these wheat farms is typically fine. So, I think very soon we're actually going to see that things are going to be alright. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm hoping that. But still, all of this stuff is queued up, so it's still going to take 24... But only until it really clears that up. So, in 9 weeks, uh, we're going to start to see that less stuff is being produced there. Can we deal with more money here? Our wages are already kind of low. Our taxation level is already kind of high. So I don't want to do that too much because there is still unrest in our country. Oh, uh, one of the other things, though, that we definitely should be thinking about is... I don't like the fact that we have so many radicals. And the fact that we have so many radicals is due to a large extent due to political movement demands. And that is specifically due to these guys, the rural folk. Now, we could try to enact agra agrarianism, but it would be pretty bad because the investment pool would only go for agricultural buildings. We could live with that for a short while, but I kind of really dislike it and a couple of groups would dislike that too. But there is a law that might actually help us. And that, I think, is down here, the question of the police. Right now we have a local police force, and we could think about enacting a dedicated police force. A lot of people would like that. Armed forces, intelligentsia, petite bourgeoisie, and the rural folk. Specifically, the rural folk would not be radicalized anymore. That would be pretty good. The Junkers, they would kind of not like that, but I think we're going to be alright. So, I like the idea of this. <coughs> Excuse me. It would mean even fewer people... Um, that would be radicalized from standard of living decreases, which always is going to happen a little bit. There's always going to be some fluctuations. So I think this is going to be good. It's going to screw with the Junkers, but we're going to try to do that. And what we're going to actually do is we're going to reform our government. And what we do here is we kick out the Junkers and we try to get a group that actually approves our legal change here. And that was... Can we see who likes that? The Intelligentsia would be a good choice, I guess. Yeah, let's bring you in. The armed forces are going to stay because our king is uh, part of the armed forces. And these guys actually do like that too. So, yes, let's confirm that. That should give us a pretty good chance here to enact that too. Yes, there we go. Perfect. I like that. We have a lot of the dramatic power. And we have just fulfilled the road to progress. Yes, very good, very good. Loyalists or interest group approval? No, no, I think more loyalists would be fun uh, because that's <coughs> better better for sort of everyone. Okay, we are improving relations with a couple of guys here. Um, Austria, obviously not. Can try to do that with the Ottomans. No, sorry, not place actions. Improve relations. Holstein, Schleswig. Netherlands, Switzerland, there's Norway. I think we're going to try to improve with the UK a little bit. Ooh, they dislike us for now. That's not good. Yeah, we really want to have them on our side long term. So let's do that. 
I don't think we care too much about the United States. Ooh, look at that. 1848. There's the uh, American Civil War for you. Right, so that being said, um, let's go ahead here. I think what I would like to do is I would like to try to get the Russians on our side. And I would like to ask you guys here. First off, let's break this uh, relation here because this alliance here, it's just way too small. Russia. Minus 100. Plus 75. Plus 85. So we are 18, 18 down. They, it would almost be in reach. It would almost be in reach. Sweden would actually accept, as would Hamburg and a couple of German states. We don't care about the Germans for now that much, but Sweden would be a pretty good play against Denmark, I guess. I would like Austria. I would like really the Russians, though. On the other hand, Sweden seems like a good fit. You know what? Let's go ahead. Let's try to get an alliance with Sweden going. Hopefully they're going to accept, have they? No, that's just a play that has started. Sweden accepted. There we go. Perfect. <coughs> political, political movement disbanded. That's good. Although the enact agrogrism is the kind of one that's, that's a little bit more uh, on my mind. But they are only lowly radicalized for now, so that's at least a little bit better. Money is coming in. So very soon, very soon, we can uh, think about declaring war. Now, we should actually think about briefly here our military and our army generals in particular. So Northern German headquarter has 42 in reserve. That's not the worst, because some of these guys would defend in case uh, anyone would attack this area. So it's not the worst, but I still think we can try to look at our armies in the North German headquarter. And see whether you're Rhineland, you're North Germany, you're North Germany. You guys are with the Junkers and you are with the armed forces. Defensive strategist, but you're an offensive strategist. You know what? I still like you a little bit better, even though you're not the group that I would like to have for now. So we're going to promote you. You're going to get a couple of more units there. What did your boiler unlock? Lovely. That does give us a way to reduce our labor, but it also gives us an, a way to use more tools and more coal, uh, but also get more out of our mines. And I'm guessing that coal, for example, is a big issue. You've got 42,000 peasants there, so you're fine for now. Oh, yeah, you could be... Yeah, explosives, not something that we're going to start before the beginning of a war, but this is something that we can do for sure. Just get a lot more coal. Yeah, there we go. Yes, it is going to use more tools. And there is going to be a deficit for that. But there's a way how we can deal with that by building more stuff. Yay! But yeah, um, it seems like the building cree is is starting to come down at least. So we are now making not that much of a loss anymore. So that's good at least. Unused construction capacity. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, we're going to be all right. We could think about more clothing in Hesse maybe. Let's do a little bit. Just to an even round nice number there. We're doing road maintenance here. I think we're still doing some road maintenance down here. How are we looking here in terms of tra uh, transportation? Ah, it's good. And I did not see what that was because I clicked it unfortunately away. But you know what? It's going to be okay. Border crossing. I will still just regularly perform a new visit near the border of Austria. That's an excellent idea. Mm. So they would get less prestige. They would get infamy. Why would I not give them infamy? I'm sure going to give them infamy. That was not for me, was it? No, it's to them. So, good for us, I think. Right, we are running a positive number here. 
So you know what? I think that's going to be okay. We are going to start our diplomatic war here. Sorry, diplomatic action. Sorry, diplomatic play. Jeez, this, this menu. And what we will ask is to transfer subject, transfer the question of Holstein. Ostleswick. I'm guessing Holstein. It's interesting that Schleswig wouldn't join in that war. How about if we ask you to liberate? Same thing. We wouldn't get... You know what? We're gonna ask them to liberate them. We'd be facing off against Holstein and Denmark. We have Sweden on our side and Holland Solan for just a single unit. These guys may join. I'm really hoping that they don't. So that would be really great if they didn't. We could ask a couple of people to join. For example, Saxon Miningen. We could ask Russia to join. Now that is interesting. Now it's going to take a while. Um, but we're also going to add another war goal. And that is to liberate Schleswig. So of course we do want to do both of these things at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me. Are you guys already starting your mobilization? I don't think we need to do that that fast. Can do that a little bit slower. But yeah, you can see troops are building up on the Danish and uh, Swedish border. And some troops are building up over here. We've got a lot of troops here, but they are just garrisons. So they couldn't really actively participate. Okay, you guys are good. Now, I could sway Russia. Now, I think we can do that without Russia. But it would be really nice if we had them. What what would you uh, you would we would owe you an obligation? I'm not too comfortable with that. But I really don't want you to join the other side. There's no one leaning your way, so that at least is very good for us. Oldenburg, we can. We can live with Oldenburg. Um, France is a bit surprising. France is a bit concerning, so you know what? Uh, we're actually going to ask the Russians to be on our side. Yes, we are going to offer owe them an obligation to support them in some place at some time, but I think we're going to be all right doing that. Uh, did we just actually ask you? Um, did I not ask you? We are attempting to sway them. Are we? Oh yeah, okay. They they did join. Okay, that, that France joint here is very concerning actually. They haven't really concentrated a lot of the, their troops on, on the border here. And it's interesting that you can't build border fortifications or anything like that. But yeah, there we are. But I think with Russia on our side, we should be relatively comfortable. Okay, it is time to mobilize there. So let's mobilize all of our generals. Yes, it's going to cost us a lot of money, but we're going to be all right. So we've got the guy in the northern German. You are the defensive strategist. You know what? We're going to send you over to the... French side there because we really don't need anything else done with you. You guys on the other hand can just push up against Denmark here from the German side. I think that's going to be alright. Massive push over there. And since we are seeing that France has joined, what I guess is that we could ask them to... Ha, huh, we can do two things. We could either uh, think about Alsace-Lua or that's actually that's actually a super interesting choice because we're effectively bundling up two two wars here in one. We're still only being supported by by France. You know what? Let's add another war goal, and that's going to be to conquer a state. Of Alsace Loire. It's going to give us a lot of infamy. And I dislike that. But that is the historical outcome. 
And it's really kind of weird to, to have that bundled in in a single warrior. I was thinking about asking for war reparations, but it just might make more sense to do it this way. Um, oh, by the way, how's the infrastructure usage here? Um, I think you will actually also need a railway. Yeah, we can't completely ignore the economy. So, last minute changes. Can we sway anyone? Do we want to sway anyone? Just a couple of minor nations really don't make too much of a difference, so I think we're going to be alright. I would not have expected France to join, but there we are anyway. And the time is ticking down here. If they don't back down, we're going to win. If they do back down, unfortunately, we do not get the... Uh, we do not get us, us. Um, but we ha still have incurred the... The penalty here. But it does not look like they are backing down. And indeed, war is upon us again. So here we are. They would um, they had a war goals of their own, war reparations and a treaty port in Sweden. Uh, of things. But yeah, there we are. We are already on a back foot here in France. They are attacking us with more than 100 uh, divisions. Whereas we are definitely pushing very strongly here into France. Uh, sorry, into Denmark. Uh, they actually have a decent amount of troops here too. But yeah. Right. Uh, anything else that we want to do with our market here just before we set off? Well, there is the issue of Man of Wars. We've got 10 buy orders. We don't have any, any stuff building that. You know what? I think it is time. Oh. Yeah, but we'd be building 15. <laughs> you know what? Let's do it. You are making money now at least. We've got battalions in reserve. That's that's okay. Input shortage. That's just the mana wars. That's going to settle itself very quickly. Lots of stuff is unproductive, but uh, we're going to keep it for now. Wood is expensive, so we might think about, um, especially since that is going to gonna increase that deficit so let's make sure that we are producing enough wood Anhar does have the chance to produce a lot of wood they do have a, a decent amount of peasants here so let's start to produce more there does that mean you're gonna need a railroad no and since you do have some furniture manufactories here I think that makes a lot of sense okay let's get the road maintenance going there and with that, I think we are up to the first Schleswig war here, which is also going to be the war against France, which is a really messed up historical timeline. But you know what? There we are. So, looking at the time though, I think that is something that we'll have to look at the next time around. So thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And do give me any last minute tips here for the war in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed and see you around next time. Bye bye.